Good afternoon everyone and welcome you all to the seminar presentation of the topic Temperature and Color of Stars organized by the Maths Department of Sacred Heart College, Tevara. I, Aparna Sunil, represents the team for and let me introduce you to my team members. Riya K. Nair, Sandra Jose, Amalam Rajan and Rohit Abraham. Riya K. Nair will be talking about reasons for color of stars. Sandra will be talking about different color of stars. I myself will be talking about how temperature leads to appearance when it comes to stars. Amal will be talking about luminous and apparent brightness. Rohit will be talking about graph relating to temperature and color of stars. A star is an astronomical object consisting of a luminous spheroid of plasma held together by its own gravity. The nearest star to Earth is Sun. Many other stars are visible to the naked eyes at night. Due to their immense distance from Earth, they appear as fixed point of light in the sky. Stars show a multitude of color including red, orange, yellow, white and blue. As we know, stars are not all the same color because they do not all have identical temperature. The color of a star is linked to its surface temperature. The hotter the star, the shorter the wavelength of light it will emit. The hottest one are blue or blue-white, which are shorter wavelength of light. Cooler one are red or red-brown, which are longer wavelength. Other important factor that determine color of star is its age. Young stars of blue color emit more light than older, redder stars. However, since there was just about as much light in the young universe as there is today, although the galaxies are now much redder, this implies that there were fewer stars in the early universe than today. Essentially, astronomers determine the age of stars by observing their spectrum, luminosity and motion through space. They use this information to get a star's profile and then they compare the stars to models that show what stars should look like at various points of their evolution. The stars appear to change the color. This is because of scintillation or twinkling as the light passes through the atmosphere of Earth. As the air moves in and out, the star light is refracted often different color in different direction because of this chromatic aberration stars can appear to change colors when they are twinkling strongly the stars color is critically identifying the stars because it tells us the stars surface temperature in black body radiation scale for example sun has a surface temperatures of 5500 kelvin typically for yellow stars. In astronomy, it says that Doppler's effect also depends what light a star appears to be emitting. A lower frequency shift is called a red shift. The faster stars move away from the Earth, the more its light is shifted to lower frequency color. This effect is known as Doppler's shift. The wavelength shift can be seen in the form of subtle changes in the spectrum, the rainbow of colors emitted in light. When a star moves towards us, its wavelength gets compressed and its spectrum becomes slightly bluer. When the star moves away from us, its spectrum looks slightly redder. Now, we are going to discuss about different colors of stars. The stars show a multitude of colors including red, orange, yellow, white and blue. Stars are not all the same color because they do not all have identical temperature. To define the color precisely, astronomers have devised quantitative methods for characterizing the color of stars and then using those colors to determine the stellar temperature. Wayne's law relates stellar temperature to stellar color. Blue color dominates the visible light output of very hot stars. On the other hand, cool stars emit most of their visible light energy at 
red wavelength. The color of stars therefore provides a measure of its intrinsic or true surface temperature. The hottest stars have temperature of over 40,000 Kelvin and the coolest stars have temperature of about 200 Kelvin. Our sun's surface temperature is about 6000 Kelvin. In order to specify the exact color of a star, astronomers normally measure a star's apparent brightness through filters, each of which transmit only the light from a particular narrow band of wavelength. One commonly used to set of filters in astronomy measures stellar brightness at a three wavelength, corresponding to ultraviolet, blue and yellow light. These filters are named as U, which stands for ultraviolet, then B stands for blue, and the V visual that is for yellow. These filters transmit light near the wavelength of 360 nanometer, 420 nanometer, and 540 nanometer, respectively. The brightness measured through each filter is usually expressed in magnitude. The difference between any two of these magnitude say between blue and the visual magnitude that is b minus v is called a color index so what is a color index a color index of a star is actually the difference in magnitude measured at any two wavelength and is one way that astronomers measure and express temperature of stars by agreement among astronomers the ultraviolet blue and the visual magnitude of the ubv system are adjusted to give a color index of zero to a star with a surface temperature of about 10,000 Kelvin, such as Vega. The B minus V color index of stars range from minus 0 0.4 for the bluer stars with temperature of about 40,000 Kelvin to plus 2.0 for the reddest stars with temperature of about 2,000 Kelvin. The P minus V index for the sun is about plus 0 0.65. And note that by convention, the B minus V index is always the bluer minus the redder color. Now we can discuss some set of questions from this portion. The first question is why use a color index if it ultimately implies temperature? Because the brightness of a star through a filter is what astronomers actually measure. And we are always more comfortable when our statement has to do with measurable quantities. The second question is, why aren't there green stars? There are green stars, but because their emission peaks is exactly in the middle of the visible range, they are perceived as white. And remember, no stars emit light of a single wavelength. Now, the third question is, can we see the different star colors with the naked eye? Because of the atmosphere we live in and how we see colors, we can see color stars, but that may not be their true color. How temperature related appearance or size when it comes to stars? Things with different temperature emit light at different wavelength. Hot objects emit light at lower wavelength or higher frequency which means the wave is jiggling fast and has more energy. That is true because hot objects should have more energy. Our eyes though being able to see only a narrow range does have an awesome way to distinguish the different wavelengths which it can see. This is through color. As we have already seen, red having the lowest wavelength that is the least energy and blue having the shortest wavelength that is the highest energy and everything else in between. Now, come to the size of the stars. Stars are hot and their temperature corresponds to wavelength which our eyes can see. Stars come in different color and we now know that the blue ones are hotter and the red ones are cooler. In 1910, two scientists called Hertzsprung and Russell tried to see if stars had anything to do with the color. These are the two scientists Hertzsprung and Russell and as we can see it in the graph, uh, they have found a pattern and they found out that the blue hot stars are bigger and red cool ones are small. This is mainly because most stars in their courses are fusing hydrogen to helium which is the main source of energy and hence the temperature. 
This fusing can only happen once the condition inside are hot enough due to high pressure of material forming the stars. The bigger more massive stars have bigger material and hence more pressure and hence the bigger ones which is producing more energy leading to higher temperature making it bluer. Blue stars are about 10 times hotter than red stars and 100 times bigger. But blue uses more hydrogen. They die out faster and there are only way fewer of them. The easiest measurement to make of a star is its apparent brightness. I am, pu I am purposely being careful about my choice of words. When I say apparent brightness, I mean how bright the star appears to a detector here on earth. The luminosity of a star, on the other hand, is the amount of light it emits from its surface. The difference between luminosity and apparent brightness depends on distance. Another way to look at these quantities is that the luminosity is an intrinsic property of the star, which means that everyone who has some means of measuring the luminosity of a star should find the same value. However, apparent brightness is not an intrinsic property of the star. It depends on your location. So, everyone will measure a different apparent brightness for the same star if they are all different distances away from the star. Stars have a wide range of apparent brightness measured here on Earth. The variation in their brightness is caused by both variations in their luminosity and variations in their distance. An intrinsically faint nearby star can appear to be just as bright to us on Earth as an intrinsic luminous distant star. There is a mathematical relationship that relates these three quantities apparent brightness, luminosity and the, and the distance for all light sources including stars. Again think of the luminosity. The energy emitted per second by the star as an intrinsic property of the star. As that energy gets emitted, we can picture it passing through the spherical shells centered on the star. From the image, the entire spherical shell is not illustrated, just a small section. Each shell should receive the same, same total amount of energy per second from the star. But since each successive sphere is larger, the light hitting an individual section of a more distant sphere will be diluted compared to the amount of light hitting an individual section of a nearby sphere. The amount of dilution is related to the surface area of the spheres, which is given by a equal to 4 pi d square. Thus the equation for the apparent brightness of a light source is given by the luminosity divided by the surface area of the sphere with radius equal to your distance from the light source or f is equal to l by 4 pi d square or l by a where d is your distance from the light source. Thus, the equation for the apparent brightness of a light source is given by the luminosity divided by the surface area of a sphere with radius equal equal to your distance from the light source or f is equal to l by 4 pi d square or l by a where d is your distance from the light source. When we first started to observe stars on telescope, we divided them into color classes white, yellow, red and deep red. This was later refined and each color was broken up into letters a to d for white, e to l for yellow and m and n for red. Later, it was realized that things made more sense if stars were categorized by surface temperature. But this letter system was retained because all the work to classify stars had already been done. So from hottest at around 25,000 Kelvin to coolest at around 3,500 Kelvin, we now have O, B, A, F, G, K and M stars. This classification system was called the Harvard system, which was developed by early astronomer Annie Jump Cannon. This classification was based on temperature and it is actually derived from 
Wayne's law regarding black body radiation. The law states that the wavelength of the light emitted by a black body will depend on the temperature of the object. Hotter objects like O and B stars are blue and cooler objects like K and M stars are red. Also, hotter stars tend to be larger and burn brighter with the additional heat resulting from the fact that so much more fuel is being burned. All of this data regarding temperature and luminosity as well as indirect information on mass and radius can be represented on something called a Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. It was simply called HR diagram. In this diagram, horizontal axis shows temperature decreasing to the right and the vertical axis shows luminosity or the amount of energy emitted by a particular star per unit time increasing going up. In the HR diagram, every dot represents a star. It is found that almost 90% of the star lie along a narrow and a long band which runs diagonally from the top left corner consisting of the hot O and B star to the lower right corner below which contains the cool and faint red M stars. The band along which most of the stars are clustered is called the main sequence in the HR diagram. The remaining 10% are divided between white dwarfs, red giants and a few odd minor varieties. The luminous stars that lie near the top of the HR diagram are called giants and the faint stars near the bottom of the diagram are called dwarfs.